Today I'm out in Ascot Vale and this is a public housing uh, estate and behind me is the uh, Wingate um, Men's Shed and there's going to be a public meeting here uh, a bit later on and what's happening is the government's planning to demolish the uh, public housing here which is uh, really sad and many of the people here don't want to leave and that's a bit of an issue and we need more public housing and that's a real issue so hopefully there'll be a lot of people that turn up and we also want to make sure that uh, we get some support because uh, you know public housing is very important for people I mean there's so many people that are that are homeless at the moment and it's really uh, sad that the government want to you know pull these down but anyway we'll see what, how it all goes today I'm here in Ascot Vale and out the front of uh, Wingate Men's Shed and I've got Steve here uh, you're a resident? Yes, 22 years I've been here in one month. Yep. Really, I got a letter in January of this year saying I was to move. Mm -hmm. And I was just curious about it, so I went down to the Ministry of Housing at 12 Church and Avenue asked them, and they, we don't know. Yep. My next door neighbour, uh, Nora, she's Spanish, she was very concerned, and I said, well, I've already gone to the Ministry, well, let's go see the Minister down Puckle Street, the local Member of Parliament, yep. and they didn't know anything about it. So, so, so you've, you've said you've been here for 22 years. You've been in the one place for 22 years? Yes, 22 years, years yes. It's been yep. renovated twice. And yep. uh, my neighbour was concerned was, she loves it where she lives. And uh, what was, so we went down and saw them, and they didn't know what was happening. Anyway, recently, we had a meeting at 24 Dunlop Avenue to find out if they could tell us more. Yep. So we walked, we marched down to the Ministry of Housing at 12 Churchill Avenue, and they said, Right, they locked themselves in and we didn't get any answers out of them. So we spoke to the minister, he doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, all good things have remote. <laughs> um, sorry, I've forgotten your name. My name's Mark. Yeah. Mark, I'm Trevor. How are you, Trevor? Look, thanks very much for having a chat, mate. And yeah, no problems. And, and you're actually a resident. Yeah, I'm a yeah. resident here. Um, I've lived on the estate for, for over 14 years. Yep. Um, I'm bringing up two young girls on my own. Yep. My young daughter just had a had a baby herself, so it's a grandkid as well. And, oh, okay. and we're in a two bedroom house uh, flat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's pretty hard, but this is the community, and yep. we all know each other. Yep. And I help in the local community centre as well. I do volunteer work there for food bank, and just help about, about giving to the community. Look, I've got, I've got to tell you that I've been here for on I don't know about over half an hour, just yep. sitting down at the, the table. Yep. The place has been quiet, um, yep. you hear the odd person, the birds chirping, yep. um, the helicopter was noisy before. Um, <laughs> but, but like the place is just as relaxed. I mean, yeah. you hear some of the some of the rhetoric that comes out of the government about these places are being yeah, but that's dens what, of criminal activity yeah, and all that. Well, I mean, well, well that's what they are. I haven't seen any carjackings go no, on today, no, so. No. <laughs> that's what they focus in on. Yep. They don't focus in on, on the good news, Yep. because there's a lot, what comes out of this estate yeah, as yeah. well like we've got english classes we help we don't judge no one we're all yep. equal yep. and um my boss over the, at the community centre jan she helps everyone yeah yep. she gives everyone a start like i got written off myself yep. as i was growing up grew up in an estate in and out of jail but i changed my life around oh well you and can I, do that yeah right, and i went to church and that's what made me good again yeah yep. so well that's the thing with me i mean my my story is you know, I was homeless for five and a half years. I lived yep. in a little van on the streets and yep. in and around these areas of yep. you know, Williamstown, all over the place. And I come to Melbourne for four days just to live up yep. in the country. Oh, and wow. ended up, ended up. Well, I've got a great group of mates. Um, yep. And there's probably people who are going to turn up here that I yep. that I know as well. And exactly. and these are the things that I like featuring on my YouTube channel because yep. I want to put the serious stuff out there. I mean, everyone can have the glossy, fun stuff, but I like to have the important stuff. And I think it's important to show the, the good things. And you know, yep. you've mentioned That's a lot right. of that. That's and, brilliant. Um, and we are the people, yeah, yeah, you know, and we still have a voice, yeah, absolutely. And we don't want them to take that away from us as well, yeah, because once we lose this, we yeah. don't gain it back, yep, right, and we know that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not only for us, it's for the next future of generations yep. too to come, yeah. How, how old would these be? Would they be built in the 60s, you reckon? Yeah, in the 60s, yes, yeah, yep. yeah, but they're still not too bad. Look, yeah, I, I mean. Well, they're still standing. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, we've got, like, you know, the numbers, the numbers of homeless are, are pretty bad, and that's right. only getting worse. Exactly. And now they're now they're knocking down the public housing, the little bit of public housing stock that we've got. That's right. Um, and going to some other corporate models, which are a bit of an issue. So look, yeah. good luck with the meeting today. I hope yep. we get a good turnout. Yes. And um, thanks very much for thank coming. you for talking. No worries, mate. And God Cheers. bless you, brother. No worries.
Um, hello everyone, um, my name is Jacob and I'm a member of the Public Housing Defence Network who have organised this meeting to, um, today. Um, but first off, um, I'd like to acknowledge um, that we're meeting on Aboriginal land um, and we would like to show our respect and acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land, uh, the Wondering people of the Kulin Nation, of Elders past and present, and that this always was, always will be Aboriginal land. I'd like to thank um, everyone who is attending um, the meeting tonight, I mean today, this afternoon. Um, I'll be your MC today and I'll be hosting a uh, facilitating discussion. Before I introduce you to the speakers, um, I'd like to give you um, a bit of a context for why we've called this meeting. Um, to tell you a bit about you know, the reason why we've decided to call this meeting, Many have probably heard about the public. Um, the state labor is planning to implement the public housing renewal project. Um, the state labor government. Um, part of this project is the state labor government wants to sell off nine to twelve public housing estates to property developers. All of the sold um, off public housing will be demolished, with the majority of the redevelopment will be um, will be public housing that will be sold for profit. A small part of the estate will be will be used to rebuild social housing, but it will be smaller and not accommodate as many people who currently live in these estates. And after the redevelopment, there will nearly be as twice as many private developments as there is public social housing. And as Scott Bell, the estates over here are one of the nine to 12 that have been targeted for this sell-off by the state Labor government. And the main reason for this um, meeting is the Public Housing Defence Network is a coalition of activists and public housing tenants who want to build a political campaign to oppose these sell-offs. Because we, we want to build a campaign to oppose what the state Labor government is doing and we want to put a stop to the privatisation of public housing. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a panel of speakers um, tonight. We have a mix of public housing tenants um, and activists from the network. And I'll introduce you to our first speaker, um, who is Adam Bant. Um, he is the federal MP um, for the of Melbourne, which represents this constituency. Um, I'll have to know, even though this is, um, that the Greens have adopted a very strong position of opposing these selves, and so that's why we have invited Adam Bant um, to address this meeting today. Hi, hi everyone, I'm Adam Bant, I'm the local member of Parliament for this area. I also want to acknowledge the traditional owners of Wurundjeri and pay respects to Elders past and present and Indigenous Australians who are here with us today. Um, I live in Flemington and um, uh, spent a bit of time here on uh, the estate talking to people over many, many years. I'm, um, if you don't know what's going on and you feel like you're being kept in the dark about it, you're not the only one. You're not the only one. We were here, how many people were here when we had a meeting in this room last, last year? Is there anyone here then? At that stage, at that stage, we had a general idea about what the government was intending to do, and I'll talk a bit more about it. Um, and at other estates, we've now got a bit more information about what they're doing, and indeed at some other estates they're barrelling ahead, and some tenants have already moved out. But we don't have a lot more information about what they're intending to do here at Wingate. The, the guts of what the government is wanting to do, right across the board, is take the land that's here, um, sell it off to private developers, then build um, what they call social housing that might be public housing or it might not, it might be run by a community group, um, and uh, sell the rest of the land off to private developers, to the highest bidder. And what they've said is they've said that they'll let people who, are, who have to move out, they'll let people come back, um, and that they'll find places for people in the meantime. That's, that's what they've said. Um, but one of the things that we do know for sure is that if you do get to come back, it'll be to a very, very different place. And um, to give you an idea about what's... Uh, sorry, and the last thing I'll say is there's a lot of secrecy about it and a lot of things we don't know because 
The way the government is doing it is by doing it on the basis of what's best for the developers and what will make the most money. And that means in many instances they don't actually know what the plan is. What they're doing is something really, really unusual that they've never done before. They've basically said, they've gone out and they've said to the developers, you tell us what you'd like to do on the estate and we'll work out whether it's acceptable. So they, don't, they haven't come down and sat down with the tenants first and said to residents, what would you like us to do? They're going to the developers and they're getting the developers agreement and then they'll come back and they'll tell people this is the way we're going to do it, right? No, no talking. So what really worries us, what really, really worries us is that the government is not coming to the residents first and saying, let's talk about how to make the estate better. They're going out and saying to developers, let's work out how to make the most money. And then we'll think about the residents later, if we think about them at all. Um, they're going ahead with the bit over in Dunlop, that, that small area, and some people have already been contacted about that. But the main bit here, they're not progressing with yet. And I think, in large part, that's because they thought there wasn't going to be any opposition to this. They thought, if we just go out and do it, we'll tell you what we're going to do and you just have to like it or lump it, really. And I think they've been a bit surprised at how many residents have said, oh, hang on, that's, this isn't actually what we want. If you want to do up the area, look, we all accept that um, some of the places could do with a bit of a spruce up, but if you want to spruce it up and renovate it, that's, that's all right. Come and talk to us about a way of making sure that we don't have to move out of the area and we don't lose our homes. Um, but if your plan is just to knock it all down, we're not interested. And they've been pretty surprised. They've been pretty surprised by that. It's about the asbestos. We've all been eating it. Well, that's, if, things need, if things need to be fixed up and we need to get rid of asbestos, we need to get rid of asbestos. No one should be, no one should be in a place that's got asbestos. Full stop. Full stop. You've 28 years. So, well, but this is, and I guess this is my point, is that if it was about making life better for residents, they'd have fixed up that problem long ago. Right? But it's not about... It's not about making life better for residents. So, what we need, what we need to do, so we can have a bit of a discussion about what's happening here. But at the moment, if you're not in the Dunlop bit, then at the moment there's no immediate plan for what's happening here. And what we need to do is take heart from the fact that they're now getting resistance to it and getting pushback, and they didn't think they would before. Take heart from that fact, and we need to kind of our voices need to be a bit louder. Right? Our voices need to be a bit louder so that if they do decide they want to come back, that they're going to come back and they're going to talk to you first about what they're going to do rather than deciding first and then telling you afterwards, which is, which is the approach at the moment. We've, to shine a bit of light on it, we've got an inquiry going in the State Parliament that's looking into what the government's doing because they're just not being upfront and they're not being transparent. The public hearing, all the submissions are in, the public hearings are over. That inquiry is going to report back the end of this month, and then the government's got to respond to it. Okay, and we're hopeful that in that during that process, we've shone, shone some sunlight on what the government's doing, and that the government's now going to have to account for its actions, yeah. and we might get some good, good changes out of that. But at the end of the day, can I say to you one thing you've got going for you at the moment? Is that this year is a um, there's a state election here, right? Now, to let you in on a bit of a trade secret, politicians don't like to lose votes, all right? And they don't like to lose their seats. And you've got you've got an enormous amount of power this year because if you kick up a fuss during an election year, in particular, then they're going to say, oh well, we don't we don't want bad stories on the front page of the paper. What do we need to do to stop you to make it all go away? And it might be that you can say, oh, well, if you want to spend some money on the state, then fix the asbestos and do it all up, but don't kick us out of our homes. That might be what, what you want to say. Um, so, but the first thing we need to do is kind of make sure we're all coming together and that we're speaking with a really loud voice. My name's Steve. I've been here 22 years. I'm going to ask this gentleman a question. After 22 years I've been here, do you really, first part of it, do you really believe they're going to relocate us? The second part of it is, they can't give accommodation to the homeless. From what I believe, the waiting list is two, three, four years old, right? Where are they going to put the residents? Are we going to, before you answer that, we've asked the ministry, we've asked the government. I received a letter in January saying I had to move, right? I prepared myself to move, and yet the last 
protest we had at 24 Dunlop Avenue, one of the sites allotted for us to move. They said, no, we're not moving yet. But the thing is, if they can't get the homeless accommodation, the waiting list is so huge for people, where are they going to put the accommodation for us? Where are they going to put us? Could you please tell us? So it's a, really, it's a really good question. Where are they going to put people? And what, they, what they've said is, can I say, yeah, hold on, look, I'm just, yeah, you can go outside. Maybe Rob will take you outside. You can go outside over there if you want to. Um, one of the things that um, you may remember that they've done a similar kind of redevelopment over in Carlton. I don't know how old, how old people remember the Carlton area, but the, they took away all the public housing open space and put in private development and built a Wake and Great Wall in between the private and the, and the public. Um, and they said to everyone there, you can come back. And a lot of people just left, and the places that they found for people were quite a fair way away. And a lot of people didn't come back. But you know right? what? They just didn't come back. So I'll, I'll answer your question in a, in a, in a second. What they said about this, the, they said about Ascot Vale, when we went and had a meeting with them, they said to me in a, in a private meeting, they said, oh, look, one of the things we think we could do in Ascot Vale is maybe we'd be able to build the new accommodation first without knocking down the old ones. So they said they might find, you know, they take away a playground here and build a big high rise. And they said maybe we can move everyone into that. But this is all just vague promises at the moment, right? There's nothing in writing. And it's like, I don't trust them until we see it in writing. And I'm worried, like you, that they're actually not, that they'll find places, but the communities and families will be spread out to the four winds. We're taking it up to them to make sure that they understand. And I, can I say, I think it's part of the reason they haven't received it. Okay, excuse me everyone, um, we have, there's going to be an opportunity for everyone to ask some questions, but we actually have a few speakers that we have to get through first, if that's okay for everyone. Is everyone? I've got something that follows up to that tradition. Yeah. Well, the main issue is Adam Band does have to go, is it a really... I'll be going, I'll be having to leave in about 10 or 40 parts. I'd like Adam to hear the, the suggestion I have. Okay, yep. thank you. Yes, Jana? Oh, look, folks, uh, I'm here because I'm a resident, uh, like Adam, of the area. And I have some good friends who live on this estate. One, Stacey over here, was on the front page of the paper holding the, uh, the protest. But for my sins, well, almost 30 years ago, I started as a general manager with the Ministry of Housing, the Estate Improvement Program. And in those days, what we were doing was improving the estate, not trying to make money for the government. And somehow, on that 30 years, and I've been gone for a few years now, I'm almost 75, but I still know what's going on. <laughs> uh, it's lost its way because it's gone from helping the tenants, helping the residents, improving their situation in all sorts of ways, which still can be done. You can plug on lifts, you can fix up laundries, you can increase security without a mass destruction. And so I know what can be done and what should be done because I started the program off for my sins when I was a younger man. But I think that what Adam's saying, and finding some follow-up, because I know you don't trust the government, and I can see why not. Uh, governments will always uh, pretend to be helpful, but often avoid the question. You need a few honest people. Now, my little suggestion to Adam and anyone else here is that we form what well, governments call steering committees. And on that steering committee, we have, say, three or four tenants who know what's going on. One single tenant, one couple, one family, and so on and uh, some government officers who know what the, they can say uh, with a neutral chairman. And you put that to the government, and that can be the conduit of information. Uh, and if you have a question or a worry or a problem like this gentleman has rightly put out, that can go to the steering committee, get the answer, and come back and give you the answer. Or, if the answer is no, demand 
an explanation. The volunteers have not known. And, and, and speak the language that the government speaks. I can do it because I, I'm sorry, I was a public servant and a general manager with the Ministry of Housing in those days for 10 years, heading up three divisions. So, you know, the technical division, the human division, the policy division, so I do know a bit about it. But the principles haven't changed. And the need here, and I've heard it from my friends who live here, is for certainty, uh, is for an understanding of your needs, and for information that is not government doubling you know, the real truth. So I think a steering committee might be happy to serve on it if you wanted it, uh, and that would get back to you regularly with the information and the things that you want. I have to I mean, people realise that public tenants are being moved out of other estates as quickly as Labor can get them out, and that, that on some estates people are moving out on the weekend? So what we're discovering is that a lot of tenants do not want to move out, they want to stay put. And so my question to the Greens is what message do you have for the tenants who are, go who are being targeted by relocation officers to sign relocation agreement forms? And when they do not want to sign them, they're not left with the forms and then they get hassled because they keep coming back and coming back. At the moment, these people are quite isolated. We know that the Greens have been forthright, and we thank Adam Vant for his statements against the public housing renewal program. So what I'd like to know is what specifically you can say to these tenants who do not want to move, they have, their homes are in good condition, they've lived there for decades, their health is suffering. Over to you, please. Let Adam so, answer that. Someone comes to your door asking you to sign something, you don't have to sign it. No. Yeah. Okay? You don't have to sign it. And in fact, if you want to come and talk to us and get advice about it and understand what it means, then come and do that. But they can't force you to sign something. Okay? They'll use pressure. They'll use pressure. But they can't, they can't force you to sign something. And over in North Melbourne, where the same thing is happening, there's actually the legal service on Queensbury Street is now giving free legal advice to people about it. Like if you go 10 steps ahead, there's things that they can do to say, right, we're going ahead and everyone's got to move out anyway, but we're at step one, right? And they're trying to jump ahead to step 10 and say, sign it and get out, but you don't have to, okay? Now, some people, there might be some people who say, oh, I want to because I've been wanting to go out of here anyway for a long time and so on. If you're one of those individuals, then that's, you know, it's your choice and it's your life. Um, no one's, no one's, there's not a problem that. But if you don't want to sign it, don't feel like you have to, okay? Don't, don't let them pressure you into it. Come and talk to us um, and get some advice about it and talk about what we, what, what we want to do. And I just, I just want to underscore this point that at the moment, they'll try and make you feel like this is all happening no matter what. Okay, this is all happening no matter what and you've got no rights and you've got no say and you've got no control. But that's not where this is at, all right? That's not where this is at. They haven't yet gone ahead. In answer to that question of whether they've already sold this bit or not, um, we haven't heard that they have, we haven't heard that. And we're hopeful this is, all of this has all been done in secret, which is what we hate. And so we're trying to get to the bottom of it and hopefully the inquiry will find out whether it's been sold or not. But we haven't heard that. We haven't heard that, okay? And I, just, I guess I just want to say to you, because so many of you have so far said, no, nah, not interested, this is our home, yeah. we're, not, we're not wanting to move. That's why I think, unlike Flemington, where it was a bit harder and they were only doing a few blocks of flats, that's part of the reason I reckon that they haven't gone ahead with it here yet. They're just they've been surprised at how, how you all stood up. Yeah. And so I would just say to you, keep standing up. Yeah. Right, keep standing up. Yeah. The last point is, I don't, I don't want to speak on your behalf um, until you've told me what you want. And so part of this, so the idea of forming a committee, of forming a group, is actually not a bad one in a sense that if, if it allows you to all come together and sort of speak with one voice about what's going on and say, look, we've actually spoken to everyone and 95% of people don't want to go. 5% might want to go, but that's because actually they want a three bedroom place and there's not enough three bedroom places here, so fix that up. But if you can all come together and be organised like that and speaking with one voice and have your own committee, it'll actually be a really, really powerful thing. 
um, and will help me go and take take concerns or take you take concerns of the government. And I reckon the government would be stupid not to come along and sit down in your committee and listen to what you've got to say. Um, if you're saying this is here we are, we're all guys and this is what we Hi everyone, um, I would like to invite um, Mark Lee um, to address um, the group. Um, she is uh, a member of Public Housing Defence Network and she is the representative of the Public Housing Defence Network to speak to us. Thank you. Can I say to you, I'm going to, sorry Marceline, I'm going to head off in a few minutes, but Rob from my office is going to stay here, so if anyone's got any questions, um, but I'm on daughter duty today, so sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so I'm a migrant from a large family with five children, and all our lives were enriched with financial support, stability and safety living in Ascotville public housing gave us. When I grew up in Ascotville on Dunlop Avenue, we call it Housing Commission. The Labour government now is using clever language to confuse people. For a start, they're calling it the Renewal Program. This is not about fixing up, doing any renovations to make people's lives better. Asbestos problems, all kinds of problems we're hearing about today. It is bluntly about selling off the public land of, on this estate to private developers. This is demolishing perfectly sound housing. This is public land paid for by taxes from past generations. The Andrews government is doing this in all the states as we've heard around Melbourne. Example, North Melbourne, West Brunswick, Northcote, Hawthorne, Clifton Hill, Heidelberg, Brighton, and here in Ascot Vale. The Labour government is calling their plans social housing and community housing. And this simply means they're selling off a large part of it for private ownership and other housing will be run by non-government organisations. The simple and blunt truth is that it will not be what we now have and know as public housing. Each of these organizations will have their own criteria for, and people will have to apply and get approval. Everyone here knows how much paperwork is involved in getting accommodation in the first place and the waiting list involved. But with a new system, there will not be one central place where you apply, there will not be one waiting list, there will not be one set of rules and regulations, and certainly there will be no security for tenants. In Ascot Bay and other public housing estates, the Department of Housing and Social Services have supposedly run consultation, asking tenants what they want and what they think of this new renewal program. Minister Martin Foley is not interested at all in what ordinary people think. From the information provided on the department website, we know that they plan to start with 24 to 42 Dunlop Avenue. To make the new flats in Dunlop Avenue attractive for the public to buy, they are including underground car park. Even, wow. the, private, even the private housing estate, uh, sorry, private housing owners on Francis Street are worried about this. The Labour government are planning to sell this land to private developers, and this is what they are calling <coughs> stage one. We do not accept this, and we need to inform the government. The state government has not yet revealed anything in detail about what's going to happen to housing on other streets in Ascot Vale estate, as Adam said. This estate is almost 73 acres in size. I don't know if you realize. It can take 2,300 tenants. But now, there's only supposedly 1,700. The DHHS are deliberately refusing to refill, refill vacant flats. They know, as we know, that about 35,000 plus people are on waiting lists. They know that people are homeless. Minister Home uh, Foley is supposedly promising all of us, all the tenants rather, that public housing tenants everywhere around Melbourne can return to their home if they want to. However, it's just not logical. They're not building the same number of flats and the same number of bedrooms in flats, so how can people come back? If we look at Northcote for an example, the number of three bedroom flats in Northcote are now 52 and they're coming down to five. Yeah? So that's a total decrease in the number of public housing bedrooms available to families on the North Coast day. Anyone can see this information on the public housing uh, program you know, website. And if we apply the idea of Northcote and other areas where the information is revealed to Ascot Vale, 
we know much the same will happen here. It will become simply private, ha private housing, not, not remain public housing. The sad truth is that the Labour government do not believe that ordinary people who need support should live on what the developers see as prime real estate. Ordinary low-income people who are now living close to public transport, schools, shops, hospitals, libraries, community centres and other many, many services supposedly do not deserve access to all of this. Growing up on this estate, I myself have been from living close to these services. All these estates like Ascot Vale are very close to the city and often tend to be part of a much larger community. All of this will be lost, the so-called renewal program, because most people won't be able to return. The other frightening reality is that under the ALP government's proposal, staff are knocking on people's doors in other estates, offering tenants relocation papers. But as Adam clearly said, you do not have to sign because you, it's within your right. You can demand legal advice, and Adam's offered his offices, so please remember that before you make up your mind as to which way to go. We have power, and we must realize this. The only way we can win this is with tenants uniting with the public in a united political campaign. Adam just gave, us, gave, you, gave you all an idea. As tenants, you can have your committee too to work out a common voice so you can actually go to him and tell him what you want. If we can build our united voices against the Labour government's plan to sell off our <coughs> public housing, they will be afraid of losing the election in November. This is all they care about. And we have to be strong. And as you can see, we will be strong with you and we will fight this government. As a tenant, just remember that you don't have to sign anything from the department. It will take a lot of hard work to change the government's plan, but we are very lucky the election is coming up. So talk to your friends, talk to your family, and let's work together to set the send the Labour government a very clear message that we totally reject their renewal program. from some of the public housing tenants um, that are speaking the panel. Um, Dan is just going to make, a bit from the public housing defence group, just a bit of a short contribution, kind of give you an idea of what we can actually do to kind of stop this, um, to stop this sales from happening and some of the practical t actions we can take. And of course, at the end um, of all the, when all the speakers are done, we'll, have, we'll definitely um, we'll have it open for discussion where people will be able to ask questions of all the speakers and make comments on, you know, what you think we should be doing as a collective. So, Dino. Yeah, my name's Dino, and I've been organising a lot of the sort of door knocking around the estates, like trying to spread the word about uh, what. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> trying to sort of spread the word to tenants about what's actually going on. Um, I think, like, when tenants actually find out what's happening, a lot of people are outraged, and a lot of people have an instinct of, you know, they want to do something about it. And I think that's really good that people want to sort of, they don't want to just take this lying down, that they actually want to do something. So what I'm going to talk about is things that we can do concretely, and sort of outline why I think that, that like, why I think that we can actually change the government's mind, that we can force the government not to do this, that we can force the government to do this in a way which is actually beneficial for tenants. Um, I think like overwhelmingly going around the estates, like there's a few people, there's a handful of people, a minority of tenants who know about uh, what the government's doing, but overwhelmingly people are just left in the dark about this. They don't know anything. They've been, you know, they don't know, a lot of tenants don't even know that there's a, a sell-off going on, that uh, the housing is being privatised. Some people just think it's being redeveloped and then they get to move back and it's going to be like it was except better. Other people know that there's privatisations, but they don't know that, um, for instance, they're going to be crammed into this tiny bit of space that's left once all the public housing is built. They don't know that there's going to be less bedrooms. They don't know that the DHHS agreement that they're signing is really dodgy and doesn't guarantee, like, give them any legal rights. Um, and that, that's because I think this is intentional on the government's part. Like, the government is lying to people and intentionally keeping them in the dark. Like, instead of, instead of saying to people, like, what the truth is, like, we're going to build private housing, we're selling off all of this land, uh, we're, building, uh, we're building less bedrooms, there's going to be less space for tenants, they're saying, this is in the best interest of tenants, we're doing this for the tenants, there's going to be more social housing. It, they're just outright lying to tenants. Instead of saying to people, um, you, know, uh, well, you know, the DHHS, the DHHS doesn't want even, they don't want you to look at the agreement 
that they're asking you to sign. They come to your door and act like you just have to sign it on the spot. They don't want you to get any sort of like legal interpreter to read the agreement for you. They don't want you to read it yourself. You just sign the agreement. And they know that if you read that agreement, you'd find out that it guarantees you nothing. You have no legal rights whatsoever. The government doesn't want you to know um, that uh, the last time uh, they did this, or you know, one of the last times they did this, when they privatised the estate in uh, North Carlton, uh, that um, uh, private tenants and public tenants had separate entrances. There were literally walls dividing private and public tenants. Instead, what they say is, uh, we're promoting social mixing uh, between you know, people from different class backgrounds. And the, so that, like every step of the way, the government is keeping people in the dark and lying to them. And I think when the government lies, there's always an element of fear. Like the government lies because it's scared of the consequences of people knowing the truth. Because if people know the truth, particularly if tenants know the truth, they might say no. And if people start saying no, then the government, and if tenants in particular start saying no, then the government can't say anymore that they're acting in the best interests of the tenants. If yeah, because they're because they're not, and suddenly the tenants are all saying that they're not. You know, if 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 um if if, if the tenants say no, then the government can't uh, act like you know it's it's acting with the sort of willing cooperation all of the ten with of all of the tenants. Like the tenants are just leaving. Uh, 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 yeah, voluntarily. It, it'll look like they're kicking the tenants out, and I think that would be a political nightmare for the te uh, for the government if it looks like they're kicking tenants out, and if it looks like they're doing something that's not in the best interest of the tenants, because that's what they've, they've been saying this whole time. It's in the best interest of the tenants, and so sort of following from that, what the public housing defence network wants to do is create that political nightmare for the government. We want as many people to know about what the government is doing. We want to spread the word on all of the estates and we want as many tenants as possible to say no and to say no publicly. Yeah. And so, yeah, I guess um, I, I could have sort of come up with a few things practically that people in this room can do <laughs> to sort of make that happen. Um, wait, I'll just get my list out. Yeah, firstly, firstly, um, sign the contact, if you haven't already, put your name down on the contact sheet over there, because that means, we're, yeah, uh, Rob's holding it up in the corner. Um, that means we can contact you about any future events. It means we can contact you about our protests, because ultimately we want to have uh, big protests around this issue. And because, you know, if large numbers of tenants and supporters come out and say no to the government, it, it, we can get media attention, and media attention means we can spread the word to broader sections of the public, and that's really important. Um, the second thing that you can do is, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the second thing you can do is start talking to your neighbours about um, what's going on and tell them about the government's plans. Um, and not only just you know, spread the word to your neighbours, but also grab a bunch of those posters over there and stick them up in your window and stick them up all around you know, where you live, around the estate, in the area, or whatever. So that way everyone knows that this is an issue. Because most people, like I said before, don't know. So we have to make it into as, as big an issue as uh, humanly possible. It's kind of a, it's heartening to see so many people come out and oppose it. And I think if everyone in this room were able to talk to their neighbours and get more people along next time, or get them along to a protest, because everyone in this room knows like a handful of people, get more people along, uh, get them to the next event. We, we can actually build this campaign and give it some momentum. And I, I, I think that ultimately the government, all of the political parties, the media, all these people who haven't paid any attention to this issue, they will start paying attention if enough people come out and say, no. Um, I'm just going to invite Steve, who um, is resident on um, the Ascot Bar State. Um, just want to give a bit of a story on actually how we met him. Um, basically, the Public Housing Defence Network was made aware um, that there was going to be a demolition process um, was going to take place, or some like the first stage. Um, drilling um, at the Dunman Avenue estate. So we had organised a bit of a, a picket line against um, against that to try and stop it from happening. And suffice to say, we were quite successful. Um, they delayed, they didn't even bring the drills there. Um, and they basically indicated to us that it has been delayed because it was supposed to have taken place over four days, um, but they had postponed it um, and we had met Steve in the process. So Steve, get up, rest of me.
Hi, as you know, my name is Steve, I've been here 22 years, and I'm totally amazed. I came here today hoping to get answers. You had the local member of parliament who said he doesn't know what's happening. We marched around the housing commission, they don't know what's happening. You people want simple answers, when and where are we moving? You've got the local minister who's talking in parliament, he doesn't know what's happening, so what do we know? The other thing that really concerns me, the government don't know. He's, he's our local like, member of parliament. The people, some of you vote. This is what I'm saying. I'm saying, okay. So what do you want? Talk to Mr. Pearson from the Labor Party. I've been moved. I don't care where he's from. Labor, Liberal, Greens. It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. I mean, the Greens have been kept in the dark as much as what we are. by the government 
and it speaks on our behalf. It speaks. It gives press releases. It goes. It, it goes to parliamentary inquiries, and it says we are in support. We are supporting this scheme. So. The, and it's very hard to get your voice heard above your own union that you can't elect. So you really must, must form a group. Yeah. And otherwise people will be picked off one by one. Yeah. And, so, yeah. you know, and this, I don't think this is the right forum for trying to get exact bits of information because no one has it. <laughs> So I'm here with James. Thanks for thanks for having a chat. And My pleasure. Today we've just had a quite an interesting little meeting of uh, well tenants and residents of the Ascot Vale estate that we're standing in the middle of. Unfortunately, the government's actually slated this place to be totally demolished. That's, that's and the, the the residents aren't very happy about it. So, well, it's completely understandable the reason why the residents aren't aren't happy because this has been their home for probably. You know, decades and decades for most of them, and there's no certainty that they're going to actually be able to come back here yep. at all. I feel that the way that the the government is keeping is treating them is keeping them into the in the dark. Yep. And I think it's more about um, a win-win situation for the government, and uh, you know, selling off the property to private developers. And for me, essentially, I see it's just the case of the rich getting richer. Yep. And who cares about these these poor people? You know, they. they they need a safety net, uh, uh, somewhere to live. Yeah. Um, and what concerns me the most is if they actually get them off this estate um, by lying to them, that they, they'll end up out on the street. Oh. And they won't be able to come back, yeah. they'll be homeless. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, like the numbers of homeless are, are absolutely horrible. We're still waiting on the results from the census. It still hasn't been released as far as I know. 
Um, but the, the figures that we've got, you know, over 100,000 across Australia that are homeless, 22,000 just in Victoria, and the government is saying, oh, we'll find you somewhere to go. We'll... No, it's not possible. <laughs> it's not on those figures, and they're, they're completely lying to us. And I think they're taking advantage of the fact that um, a lot of these people wouldn't be all that well educated either, yep. and they wouldn't be that well informed about what's actually going on in the community and what's actually going on with this whole program. Yep. They think that the government's going to look after them, but I think the days of... You know, the current government looking after people is long gone in my opinion. Well, that's where I, I take heart from, from things like today because we had a very passionate group of people there. They listened to mm. Adam Bant was there and, and also Jacob from the uh, Public Housing Defence Network and Fiona from Friends of, Housing, uh, Friends of Public Housing. Um, they listened to what's going, what's going on. There's talk of creating some steering committees. Some, I'm a member of the Greens, I'm a member of the local Mooney Valley branch of the Greens and um, we're doing our pre-selection at the moment so I'm, I'm putting my hand up for pre-selection. Yep. Um, so, I, and I expect I will probably most likely be the candidate for the state seat of Essendon. Yep. So I'll actually be running against the guy I think is, who is the biggest in letting down the people in his community. Yep. Uh, Benny Pearson. Yep. And um, he actually knows me already, so he knows that I'm coming for him. Well, if you're going to be the local member, this has to be one of the absolute hot ticket items. I mean, you don't get much more serious. And when you're talking about hundreds of people and their lives being trashed, um, and that's unfortunately what could happen. I mean, you don't want to see it, but if the government get their way, you've got people that will possibly end up homeless, so their whole community will be torn apart. People who've got kids in schools, you know, they've got to move them, and that can be traumatic enough. I mean, I moved uh, three times when I was in my, my schooling, and um, it was always tricky, you know, find new friends and things like that. But uh, So, yeah, look, I think I think this is quite interesting. These places don't look like they're that run down, really. They're not, I don't know, maybe a bit of pain. I think some of them need a little, little bit of work. I saw some smashed windows around the corner there before, but, you know, they should be actually building, if this is space that's not even being used, they should be building more public housing, yep. not this, you know, what are, what are the words oh, they're using well, for they're, they're banning around social, social, so, social housing and community housing and then there's public housing and they're three different things um, but the government want you to sort of digest them all as one thing and they're not they're totally they're, totally different and the problem is that social housing in my book is a broken model because you leave it in the hands of the corporates they will just grab every cent they can get out of it and the other problem is when you set rents irrespective of people's income there can be a disconnect where suddenly someone finds they can't afford to stay in a spot. And that already happens in the rental market, now the private rental market, private. but public housing was always there as a safety net and we would hope that it continues. It needs to be expanded like you wouldn't believe, not you know go and rip down, I don't know how many, over a thousand uh, apartments here. Uh, it's all pretty sad. I just wanted to say one oh, well, last thing which, yeah, which is it. relevant. Um, and I mean, I, I absolutely, really passionate about social justice and human rights. Yep. That's the reason why I'm a member of the Greens. Yep. Um, I'd love to be able to represent the people in this community, but further, it's not as if I don't understand it. You know, like I'm, I'm a tertiary qualified computer engineer and an IT manager, yep. Aboriginal background. Yep. Okay, so my family were pretty disadvantaged. I grew up in Aboriginal housing, which is the equivalent to public housing. Yep. And we just had the opportunity. We didn't have to stay there forever. Eventually, the, uh, we got out of out of public housing, the Aboriginal version of public housing, and you know we've all got a really good education, all of my siblings, yep. and we've all got university degrees and PhDs and masters, you know. Yep. So it supported us while it was needed yep. when we were young, and we've become really successful. So that's why it's so critical. These people can be supported now. Yep. That eventually I see that they'll be able to be successful as well. We well, got kids growing up here, and you know the kids, if they're in a stable environment and a stable accommodation, Absolutely. they'll do better at school. They will yes. get better marks. Yes, they'll feel better about it. Go to university. Who knows what they'll get? Don't have to move. They're going to be able to go to that primary school. Their whole you know, six years that they would be able to, then maybe go to the local state school, or if yep. they're lucky, they might be able to get into you know a Catholic school or something yep. like that. Yep. And that's what it should be all about. My parents understood the power of education. Yep. They went to grade three and five respectively, but they knew the power of education. They made sure all of us kids finished grade 12 and we all had an absolutely stable environment all through our 12 years, 13 years of schooling. Yep. Every single one of us, seven kids. Yep. So it's a critical. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks very much.